Jaspers will trigger the inbound with Richards, Capuano, Waterman, Williams, and Stores on the floor. Capuano right side. Tom just picked up his first collegiate basket, and now he's double teamed, but is able to scoot it around for Stores. Head fake, and now kicks into the corner for Richards. Shane drives, pulls up from 14 feet. Good. Boy, he is money in the bank. Quickly back the other way. Haas on the left side looking for Nate Jones. Skips it to him on the right wing. He's open for three and connects. Nate Jones, a brilliant three-point shooter out of Radford, Virginia. 13 to 10, Manhattan on top with 14.45 to play in the first. Richards, top of the key, bounce pass right side for Stores. And now Capuano controls. Stores here on the near left side, Bucknell. In their zone defense here, Capuano. Three ball on the way, front rim, rattles around, no good. Haas with the weak side board. McKenzie quickly across midcourt, moving from left to right with a left-hand dribble. Hoffman, 18-foot jumper on the way is good. That's his game. Dom Hoffman, senior out of Hawthorne, New Jersey, has very solid outside shooting. Well, you can see he's a smart play. He went to the open area right at the elbow. And again, this is a very good shooting team, perimeter shooting team. Bucknell, no hesitation by Hoffman. Stores on the right side. Working against Haas as the Jaspers nurse a one-point lead. Six minutes into this first half. Richards, extra pass Capuano. Three ball, corner pocket, got it. And the Jaspers lead by four, 16 to 12. That's good ball movement by the Jaspers. They're finding the open man, but coach made a great point with Bucknell. A good team like that, they can't consistently get open looks. The last two possessions, the Jaspers allowed them to get two open looks. Full court pressure now, 2-2-1 press. Steven Brown controlling, looks to blow by Wilson. Capuano comes to help, had it poked away. Wilson tried to get to it, could not. And now there's a five on three. Wow, how many steps did McKenzie take? He got the shot off without a walk. Instead, it's pulled in and laid in by Zach Thomas. 16-14, our score. Richards, right side, Capuano. Near left wing, here's Wilson with Carlton Allen back on the floor as well. Skip pass for Capuano, head fake, looking inside for Carlton, now kicks into the corner. Richards is open from the right corner, rattled halfway down, popped out. They had already put three on the board, that one <laughs> fell so far down. Here's Brown on the left wing. Free throw line for McCauley. Jumper on the way, no good, easy board for Richards. And smooth, that's something that Steve Massiello wants Shane to do a lot more of. Love to get out there and become that 6-7-8 rebound guy as well as score. Wilson drives, kicks, Williams open for three. Instead, he takes his time, drives inside, floater from four feet, no good. Allen is there for the offensive board. Capuano head fake on a three. He'll drive, leave it for Richards, and now here comes Shane, driving it off the window, no good, but a foul. Like the aggressiveness on the guards, using the head fake, getting into the lane area. Maybe in the past, Richards would have settled for the three. Even Rich Williams using the head fake, getting into the lane. We talked about guys in that 6'4", six, 6'5", six, range at the mid-major mm -hmm. level can do a lot of things. Like to see him get to the free throw line. Yeah, good patience, not just settling for a, a jump shot, trying to get in there, draw some fouls, get to the free throw line. Shane hits on the front end. Rashawn Storrs back in, replacing Tom Capuano. Coach, what do you think about Stores coming in and out? He hasn't been out there consistently, but keeping him fresh. I think it's terrific. Right. You know, every two, three minutes, give him a blow. His leg's not going to tighten up. And get him back in there. Use that energy that, that he comes with. Richards hits on both. He's got nine points now. Wilson and Stores guarding McKenzie, but he's able to break the press. Left side, here's Jones at the elbow. Thomas goes up with the jumper from eight feet. No good. Carlton Allen fighting for the rebound. Had it, lost it, out of bounds. Two buck now. Got to squeeze those rebounds, <laughs> big fella. Squeeze the orange. We have a final from up in Albany. The top-ranked Stags able to defeat Manhattan in five sets. Jasper's volleyball team falling in the semifinals of the MAC tournament after another 20-win season, a brilliant season for them. And Shane Richards has called for a foul here on the baseline. That'll be the sixth already on Manhattan. And the first on Shane. Here's Matt Maloney giving Rashawn Stores that extra breather. Checking in, the freshman walk-on. Pass was tipped and stolen by Waterman right off the inbounds. And now Wilson hustles ahead. Richards driving in transition, looking for Carlton Allen, but a good job defensively by DJ McClay to get back there and tip it out of bounds. So 
So Wilson to trigger with 12-18 to play here in the first. Manhattan a four-point lead at 18-14. Wilson gives it for Allen. Carlton, one dribble out for Richards. And now Wilson resets the offense. 13 seconds to shoot for Manhattan. Wilson to the near left side. Looking for Waterman coming through. Skip pass for Maloney. Catch and shoot. Three ball on the way. Back rim too strong. Rebound pulled in by Nate Jones. McKenzie the other way. Left to right for Bucknell. Leaves it for Thomas. He drives and a foul on Maloney. A little bit of a bump outside by Maloney. That's the seventh foul on Manhattan, so it's one and one for Bucknell when we return. 11.53 to play here in the first. Jaspers leading 18 to 14 on the Jaspers Sports Network. Your family are here. You're more comfortable in the, in the surroundings. Zach Thomas at the line for a one and one opportunity here after the seventh foul on Manhattan. He hits on the first. Thomas threw three games, eight of 10 at the line. He was five for five at the charity stripe in that win at Robert Morris. This the second straight NCAA tournament team in which Bucknell is facing. Morris, Robert Morris, champions of the NEC last year. He goes one of two at the line, and Tyler Wilson brings it up with Rich Williams, Rashawn Storrs, Shane Richards, and Carlton Allen on the floor. Richards, left side, hounded by Frazier, leaves it for Storrs. And now Storrs comes around an Allen screen at the free throw line, reverses it for Williams. He'll drive left side. Rich pops from eight feet, too strong off the window. Allen, nice O board. Three ball for Richards, too strong, no good. Rebound pulled in by Fallon. McKenzie dribbling around Storrs, almost had it poked away. And the Bison reset. Between the circles, right side, here's Jones. Jones shoves off of Storrs a little bit. 13 to shoot for McKenzie. Looking inside, they get it to Fallon. Fallon underneath the basket, spin move, had it knocked away. It's loose, it's still there. Carlton Allen dives on the floor to get it. And Manhattan forces the turnover. Boy, great help defense that time as the ball went into the low post to Fallon. Three Manhattan players sur surrounded him. Well, Coach, you talked about Fallon. He is a long 6'9". He does a great job using his body and those long arms. Stores on the right side. Now near left wing, here's Tyler Wilson. Ten seconds to shoot. Stores lost the handle, gets it back. Richards inside for Allen. Carlton, turnaround jumper from eight Oh, feet. baby, and that's his shot. Turn and face, he freezes the defender and then knocks in the short jump shot. And showing great patience. Here's Frazier, kick pass into the corner. Three ball from Jones is good. Nate Jones, his second triple of the day. Just a freshman. Good looking athlete, Nate Jones. Nate Jones, the hired gun. Again, the recipient off that skip pass against the Jasper pressure. That's always a soft spot. Coach's son, too. His dad is the head coach at Radford University in his hometown. As Wilson on the near left side. Richards, right wing, three ball to answer, yes! Shane Richards has 12 points here in the first. 10 minutes played, 10 minutes left. Jasper's ahead, 23-18. That basket looks like a swimming pool to <laughs> Shane Richards. Ball poked away from behind by Tyler Wilson. It'll stay with the Bison, though. That's great hustle from Tyler Wilson to sc sprint up the court and force that ball out of bounds. See, we had not touched on Tyler Wilson. He always brings the great energy on the defensive end. There was a steal earlier. He was able to turn the defender. I believe was Cappy was able to get that steal because of Tyler's effort on the turn. A couple of substitutions for both teams as driving inside off the window. Too strong. Richards, what a strong one-armed rebound by Shane Richards on the weak side. Boy, nice to see him get underneath there. Rich Williams open for three. Right side, back iron, no good. Too strong. Chris Haas, the easy board for Bucknell. Richards with a pair of rebounds here. Feels like he's got more than that, though. The stats only have him for two. As Fallon off his hands, out of bounds, back the way of Manhattan. Manhattan's really pretty small out there right now with Zane Waterman, the biggest man. They say 6'8", but he's probably a shade under. Look, and he plays a little bit smaller. Even if he were a 6'8", he would prefer to shoot the jumper, but he's starting to bang a little bit more. Long two from Rich Williams rattled in and out. No good. One and done go the Jaspers here. Leading by three, 23-18 with 9-10 remaining. Nifty dribbling here from John Azanaro, trying to get around Capuano and Stores. Pass almost stolen by Thomas. Kicks into the corner. Chris Haas for the first time today. Yes. Yeah, well, you can't leave him open too much. We know he can bury it. Had a big game, last game out against Wake Forest, I believe it with 26 points. That's the last guy you want to leave open in a scramble situation. The Jaspers try to get a couple of steals and miss. Averaging 21 points per game, he is 50% from three so far this season. Rich Williams, he'll take a three ball, and he'll hit. There you go, Rich. He missed it. Took two before, but they were good shots. 
He's feeling it. Offensive foul, yes sir. Rashawn Stores doing what he does best, smooth draw on a charge. And that's the Stores effect, setting up the offensive player. That time again, getting right in front of him, drawing that charge. Those are the intangibles we've talked about with Stores. It may not show up on the stat sheet as far as his numbers are concerned, but the team and this program understands what he brings. He gets rewarded with a brief break on the stationary bike back behind well, the Jasper's Well, that's just bench. to keep him warm. Yep. Smart idea to bring out that, that bicycle. Capuano left side, Rich Williams looking for Maloney and said he'll drive it off the bounce. Rich, awkward shot, no good. Fight for the rebound. Waterman and Fallon both head to the ground. Four on four for a minute as now the two sprint back. Frazier, right side as an aura. Floats it in for Thomas. Going to work on Waterman. Spin move off the left block, off the window, counted and one. Yeah, Thomas, good scorer also. Coming in averaging 13 points. Took his time and took Waterman for a little bit of a walk in the park was able to draw the foul. Waterman came over with the help side defense a little late. Thomas understanding that, hit him with the spin move, using his body, drawing the contact, able to get the and one situation. As we've talked about, this is a Bucknell team that returned all five of its starters from a year ago, which may say more about their team last year, that they had three freshmen in the starting lineup and were still able to win a regular season championship in the Patriot League, but they return 78% of their scoring and 75% of their rebounding. Not often you can say everybody came back, but pretty much everybody came back for Bucknell last season. Well-balanced team, and when you say that, the first thing that comes to my mind is being able to play on the road. Oftentimes when you have experienced guys, it doesn't make a difference. Capuano and a whistle away from the basketball. It's going to be a foul on Frazier. Ryan Frazier, the senior out of Silver Spring, Maryland. And that'll be the fourth on Bucknell. It's going to be the fifth. Just like you, again, like the preparation. So you may not like the idea of having so many games so close because you want to make some tweaks here and there. Wilson inbounded to Allen. It was smacked away by Chris Haas. And the other thing I think is when you look at your team, you'll get a much better idea what you – what you have to work on, what you're doing well when you're playing three games in such a short period of time. You'll get a real true feel for what you have. Right. Stores inbounds it into the backcourt, and Wilson will walk it across with Carlton Allen, Shane Richards, and Rich Williams on the floor. Wilson reverses it for Williams on the right side, looking in for Stores at the free throw line. Allen on the right wing, back to handoff for Williams. He'll take that deep three, missed it short though, long rebound pulled in by Kimball McKenzie. McKenzie to the left side. And now Dom Hoffman there. Skip pass for Haas. Richards able to get there quickly defensively, and then it's stolen away. Help defense by Allison created that. Williams coming the other way with a slide step. Right-handed floater is good. Yeah, using that athletic ability, taking it strong to the basket. Jasper's lead by four once again, and then Wilson's going to get called for a foul as he thought he had a clean steal, but it may have been after he smacked the basketball away where there was a little bit of contact. One no, of the things, when you, uh, excuse me, go ahead. One of the things Stores and Wilson do a good job of, they turn that, def that ball handler and they look for the other one to come up with the steal. That time, not successful, but during the course of the year, keeping out those guys playing together, doing a good job getting steals from one I another. I mean, they're two tough little guys and, and you turn your way, you don't know they're there, and then bang, they hit you. You love the energy that they bring. One and one for McKenzie. He hits on the first. Freshman was named the... Baltimore Catholic Athletic League Player of the Year last season. Can play at the one or the two guard. And he hits on both free throws, making it a two-point game at 28-26. He'll head to the bench in favor of John Azanaro. Well, gentlemen, as well as the Jaspers have played so far in this first half, a credit to Bucknell. The Jaspers only up by two points. Just watching the game, you would think they may be up by ten. Capuano on the right side. It's a screen from Richards. Looking for Richards now on a flare. Here comes Capuano driving right side. Shoved off here. Stores left wide open from straight away. Front rim no good. Rebound pulled in by McClay. And now here comes Azanaro controlling the point. Hounded by Stores. Right side Jones. Dumps it inside from McClay, looking for Hoffman at the left elbow. McClay got Allen off his feet, and now leaves it for Hoffman. Streaking in, lays it in. We're tied at 28. Hoffman diving right down the length to the basket. Nice pass. We got a tie game at 28. 
That is something Bucknell does incredibly well. They pass the basketball, 23 assists per game through their first three. Williams driving inside, tried to pass it, couldn't, lost it, had it back, and then lost it again to Hoffman. And now Azanaro working against Capuano and a foul on Cap. That's going to be the 10th team foul, so Bucknell going to be in the bonus now for the final six minutes, 18 seconds. So two shots for Azanaro. But how about that number? 23 assists per game, and their assist to turnover ratio is almost at 2-1 to one through the first three. Yeah, very unselfish team. Passed the ball very well. First free throw on the way. It is good for Azanaro, junior from San Antonio, Texas. 5'11", 180 pounds. This is a team that has a lot of versatile guards that can play at that one or that two spot. Azanaro, just another one of them. Hits on both free throws, and Bucknell has their first lead, 3-28, to 6-15 to play till halftime. Capuano for Williams in the left slot. Rich hands off for Stores, top of the key. And now Richards. Shane with 12 points here in the first half to lead all scores on 4 of 8 shooting. Looking to get a screen from Waterman, instead denies it, and now Waterman going to drive in on Hoffman, lowers his shoulder, gets inside of the double team, high off the window, a little strong, and an easy board for the Bison. Up ahead, running the floor was McClay. Williams was there to knock it around. It's out of bounds to Bucknell. Yeah, Zane Warden made a tough, difficult shot there, and then he really had a hustle back as his man was flying down the floor. Bucknell will keep possession along the baseline. Carlton Allen checking in, replacing Rich Williams. Foul is on. Excuse me, it was out of bounds. Nate Jones to trigger the inbound. Finds Azanaro in the corner. And now back up top. Driving around Jones. Offensive foul. No, a blocking foul going to be called. Oh, excuse me, they're going to get Zane Waterman. I thought they would have gotten stores there. It's the second on Zane, so at the free throw line will be Nate Jones. It looked like Storrs did a good job reading the rotation. He probably would have gotten the call in his favor. Obviously, Waterman called for the foul. But the Jaspers, again, again have to weather not necessarily a storm, but Bucknell steadily has got himself back in great position. Jones hits on the first free throw. Yeah, Buck this is a team you don't want to foul this, as it early. He's shooting about 75% from the free throw line. They're 8 of 9 so far today. They have a 3-point lead, and Jones makes it a 4-point lead. Boy, he's a nice-looking freshman, Jones. Good size, 6'4", 6'5". Looks like he's been in the icebox for a year. <laughs> Doesn't look like a true freshman. Not at all. <laughs> Capuano double-team, trapped, lost the ball. Azanaro with the steal, driving inside, and he is going to get fouled by Carlton Allen. Missed the layup. Steve Massiello not happy with the officiating crew at the moment, trying to get Kevin Ferguson to come over and Matt Palum, who made the call. And I'm not great at lip reading, but I believe I could read what Steve Massiello just said to Kevin Ferguson saying it's not about him. Azanaro at the line for two. After he missed layup, he hits the first. Well, I thought that was a good hard trap right in front of us. Again, being able to come up with that still, but Bucknell again weathered that early storm by the Jaspers with the good energy the Jaspers came out with as the second free throw goes down. Now they're in good position up by six points. Bucknell with an 11 0 run here, excuse me, a 10 0 run to take this 34 28 lead. Here's Richards, head fake, now drives, and they're going to call a foul on Nate Jones. Well, that's only the sixth team foul for Bucknell. Next one will be the bonus. Nate Jones shadowing Shane Richards now, again, trying to take him out the game. But what I like with Shane being able to do, add it to his game, where he can put the ball on the floor, get in that mid-range. We know he can shoot the three, but once he can establish that mid-range, almost unstoppable. Inbounds comes to Capuano. I'm not 100% sure, but I think the Jasper bench just received a bench warning. Maybe Steve Massiello may have gotten one as Stores on the right side. Looking for a screen from Carlton Allen. Reverses it instead for CA, and now here's Waterman. Gets a screen from Allen. Top of the key, Stores. 5'11", 
Five minutes to play till halftime. Stores driving inside. A lot of contact. Off the window. No good. Fight for the board. Allen fought his own man in Waterman. Zane comes away with it. Counted and won. That's just a bloody basket. That's an effort basket. Allen and also Waterman really keeping that ball alive. Zane able to come up with it and finish it off. First two points of the half for him, and they need him to do some scoring. You like to see him be on the glass a little bit more, coach, that you talked about earlier. That's right. Yeah. And he's gonna and he's capable of doing that. Manhattan down by four, 34-30. We've got just under five minutes to go in the first half. We've got Ojo back on the floor with three fouls as Waterman is at the line, a chance to make it a three-point game. 34-30, 4.59 remaining till halftime. Waterman misses on the free throw, rebound, fell to Tom Capuano. It's still on the floor. A jump ball is going to be called, and it is to Bucknell. Well, you got to love the hustle. Both of these teams hitting the deck going after it. Steve Massiel said this was going to be a great test for his team, an early test, and he felt watching them over their first three games, this may be one of their best teams that they face in non-conference play, maybe even throughout the season. But they're impressive early on. I like the experience. You talked about this team coming back and bringing so much back. And when you watch teams on the road, I think the telltale time sign is when they can handle a run and then sustain it and then be able to come back and you know give their blow also. 34-30, Bucknell leads, 4.45 to go. Screen from Fallon for McKenzie. He reverses it, top of the key. Thomas, a three ball on the way, back iron, no good. Capuano tried to get to the rebound, could not. Thomas, left side Haas, open for three. Front rim, no good. Another O board for Thomas, and then Capuano's going to get called for a foul. He's outsized there, and when he reached up, he knocked on the shoulder of Thomas. Second foul on Capuano, so Zach Thomas will head to the line for a pair of free throws. Bucknell getting a lot of their points at the free throw line, taking advantage of being in the bonus. Hits on the first free throw. 12 of 13. Never good when you get more than one or two offensive rebounds. It always usually spells doom. Second one for Thomas. Also good. Back to a six-point game, 36-30 in favor of the visiting Bucknell Bison. Four and a half to play here in the first. Thompson is only a sophomore, has good size, 6'7", about 220. Richards on the left wing, reverses for Ojo at the elbow. Ojo going to back down on Fallon, up with the right hand, strong move. Waterman tried to slam it back home, but couldn't. Fallon gets the rebound. Left side, here's Thomas. Ojo driving side, blocked it at the rim, and then rips down the rebound. Ak Ojo, his first career rejection. And with four minutes till halftime, Capuano brings it across at the free throw line. Gets inside, counted in one! Oh. What kind of move was that? The little guy, up and under. And that's good footwork by the youngster, able to use his footing properly to get the shot in and a blast act. Russ, Keith, all these guys, really good dudes, but you know, excited to be a part of the process. As Tom Capuano is at the free throw line, chance to get Manhattan back within three, and he converts. So Tom Capuano, after going scoreless in the opener, he's got seven points, excuse me, eight points here in the first half. <laughs> the freshman in just his second career game, McKenzie picked up his dribble, hounded by Storrs on the left side. Here's Zach Thomas, and now Jones. Jasper's great defense here in the half court. With nine to shoot, Jones will take the deep three. Back rim, no good. Skying in for the rebound was Rich Williams. Manhattan can tie it here with a three. Good block out that time. Capuano between the circles with Richards, Williams, Allen, and Stores. Four shooters on the floor for Manhattan. They give it inside to Richards, who's posting up. Tough jumper from six feet. He thought he got hit. Instead, an easy rebound for Haas. Yeah, Jones getting, getting a deflection there. Good defense. McKenzie looking inside for Fallon. And now Thomas top of the key. Left side, Chris Haas driving inside against Williams. And a big contact and a charge going to be taken by Carlton Allen. Big collision there about eight feet from the basket. Well, the big fellow does that quite a bit. And that time got over in, in perfect shape. Took that charge. He's a little bit more lively today than I've seen him in the past. That is the ninth team foul. 
on Bucknell. One more in Manhattan will be shooting free throws the rest of the way. Shane's going to bring the ball up here for Manhattan. We haven't seen much out of this in his first three seasons. But then again, we haven't seen many post-ups, and we've seen a few of those right. his last couple of games. Richards on the left wing, driving around Frazier and a foul, so Shane will go to the line for two with 2.40 remaining. That's one of the things you really like to see in a Manhattan program, the development of players. You know, a guy comes in one way, and before he leaves, he's added so many different things to his game. You talked about Carlton Allen, something you wouldn't have seen out of him, and Shane Richards, but that's part of the coaching staff doing a good job getting these guys better. Missed on the first free throw. Coach, you and I saw it a little bit on Monday night at St. Mary's. That little screen where the curl at the elbow and the jumper was a George Beeman specialty a couple of years ago that Shane has kind of fallen into that role. Speaking with Coach Massiel prior to the game, he said he wants him, would love to see Shane become that George Beeman type scorer, but when George had an off night, if he ever did, he still went out and got those six, seven rebounds. Shane hits the second free throw. It's a two point game, 36 34, two and a half to play here in this first half. Jones, top of the key for Thomas. Works around, stores, and now reverses it for Jones. Left wing, there's Haas, threw it inside for Fallon. It almost fell to Richards, and then Fallon falling out of bounds, threw it off of Shane. Got Bucknell rushing a little bit in their offense that time. Bison have missed their last four shots. They'll inbound underneath the basket with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Ernestine has Rich Williams guarding the inbound. They find Fallon. On the left corner, up top for McKenzie with five. McKenzie with four, driving inside on Allen. Scoop shot goes. Nice move, nice penetration. McKenzie all the way to the bucket with the left hand. Back to a four-point game, 38-34. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Richards, top of the key. Now right side, Stores. Capuano in front of the Bison bench. Lob pass over for Stores on the left wing. 15 to shoot. Allen calling for the ball down low. Now he'll repost with 10 to shoot. Here's Rich Williams driving in on Thomas. Hop step from four feet. Got it. Boy, you like to see that off the dribble last year. He would have settled for a long jump shot. Now getting a little bit closer to the basket, pulls up, knocks it in. Fallon, floater from eight feet is good. Big fellow with a teardrop coming <laughs> wow. down. Fallon, that's his second bucket of the day. He's got five points, and Bucknell holds a four-point lead as Whistle here for Stores to check out as that's Kevin Ferguson calling timeout because Stores was injured and Rashawn immediately heads back towards the training room. Didn't even get to the bench. He immediately just left and went back to the training room area. So we'll keep an eye out for where and when Rashawn Stores emerges. 120 to play, 15 seconds on the shot clock for Manhattan, trailing by four. Williams, right side, Tyler Wilson, who just checked back in. Wilson at the left elbow, reverses it for Richards. Shane driving, kick out, Williams, head fake. Now he steps inside the arc, missed the 10-footer, fouling the rebound for Bucknell. And then Williams, them in the other way, almost had the steal. Stores quickly reemerges as we take a look over at the Manhattan bench. May have just been a quick stinger that he had to go, and sometimes you just got to let out a little scream when you get hurt, and he didn't want to do it right there on the court. Great opportunity for him. Again, having a very good team returning back, that always makes it easier for a coach. Left side, here's Thomas. Floating it inside for Fallon, working against Allen. Spin move, tough hook shot, no good. Long rebound is going to be poked around, and Capuano is going to get called for a foul, fighting for the loose ball. That is going to be the third foul on Capuano here with 48.9 seconds remaining in the half. Capuano like a fullback there. <laughs> Just keeps on going, keeps on bouncing off people, picking up that foul. Good hustle. But again, making hay at that free throw line. Yes, exactly. They have, as McKenzie hits on the first free throw, they have made as many free throws as Manhattan has field goals. They are 14 of 15 from the line. The Jaspers 14 of 35 from the floor. As McKenzie goes one of two at the line, Richards reaches up and grabs the rebound. And Steve Massiello will take his use it or lose it timeout here with 46.4 seconds to go. Back and forth first half we've seen here. The Jaspers jumped out to a free throw shooting team and they're not working on the offensive end. And then the rebounds is something. When you get second and third shots, there's always something bad going to happen. Wilson on the left side. Richards top of the key. Head fake. Now leaves it back for Wilson, but it got stolen. 
Tried to find Tyler, instead found Kimball McKenzie. McKenzie makes the adjustment in the air, lays it in, and Bucknell has a seven-point lead. Yeah, anytime you leave your feet, you get caught up in the air, pretty much is going to be a turnover. That's what happened with Shane that time. Thought he was going to shoot and try to draw three free throws. Instead, with 15 seconds, the Jazz was going to hold for the final shot. Here's Wilson. Driving with 10. Tyler right to the lane. Got it knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Manhattan. 8.7 seconds to go. And Rich Williams will check in to replace Zane Waterman. And now Tom Capuano will come in and replace Matt Maloney. So it'll be Capuano, Wilson, St Richards, Williams, and Allen, the five on the floor. Wilson to trigger the inbound underneath his own basket. They're looking for Richards at the top of the key. Wilson has to get it in, finds Capuano with eight. Cap, bounce pass for Richards. Three ball on the way, back rim no good. Allen tipped the rebound out, but right to McKenzie. Fires it up from half court, good if it goes, off the window and no good. So Manhattan will head into the locker room, trailing 43-36. Zane Waterman, Tyler Wilson, Shane Richards, Carlton Allen, and Rashawn Stores, the five on the floor for Manhattan as they move Left to right, good to see Storrs back out there. He left with an injury late in the first half, but he seems to be all right. Gets around a Carlton Allen screen, reverses it. Richard, wide open, catch and shoot, three ball, good. Right yes. off the bat, Shane Richards gets the Jaspers on the board. They trail 43-39. That's the way they started the first half, Shane. Wide open that time, left-hand corner. And now a turnover as Wilson with the back tip, right to Allen, but Allen's pass was tipped by Stephen Brown, right to Nana Fowland. Now on the left side, Chris Haas for Bucknell, trying to answer that early three-pointer. Zach Thomas, right side, works around Wilson. Bounce pass for Fallon. Lost the handle, gets it back through, throws it up, back iron, no good. Rebound pulled in on the weak side by Tyler Wilson. Wilson leaves it for Allen at the free throw line. He'll take the long two, back iron, no good. Easy board for Haas. Brown between the circles. Sophomore from Manassas, Virginia. Right side, Thomas into the corner, wide open is Frazier, and he buries it. Yeah, you, there's a miscue there. Frazier all alone in the right-hand corner, right in front of Bucknell's bench. Played here at prep school at Salis the Salisbury School in Connecticut. Handoff for Wilson. Jasper's trailing by seven once again. Richards catch and shoot, thought about the three. Now left side, Waterman. They're looking in for Allen. Said Zane's going to drive inside. Big right-handed hook shot. No good as it hit too strong off the back iron. Well, you know, I have to like the move. It just hit the back of the iron and came right out. Here's Thomas in oh, transition. that should have been a charge or a walk, I thought. Well, it didn't get the travel, but he got the charge. Did Rashawn Storrs. That's the second one he's drawn today. 18-21 to play. Jasper's with possession, trailing by seven. First foul on Thomas. First on Bucknell here in this second half. Waterman on the right side. Richards trying to fight through a couple of bodies. Now on the left wing, here's Wilson. Richards inside. They were looking for Waterman. It got poked away and stolen here by Bucknell. On the run, here comes Frazier driving inside. Out for Haas. Thought about the three. Instead, he drives into the lane. And another offensive foul. No, they got a blocking foul on Stores that time. Stores late that time there, but really quickly back to Zane Waterman. I like the two previous possessions. Although he didn't score early in the first half, he did something similar. But he made the adjustments just a little hard on that little half hook. And that slip cut there, pass was bad. But you like the way the young guy's learning. He's starting to understand this game a little bit more for him. Haas at the free throw line for two. Hits on the front end. 14 of 17 coming into today. Haas just with the three points at halftime. Again, a big time scorer. Hails from Pelston, Michigan. And he hits on both free throws. Nine point lead for the Bison, two minutes into the second half. Stores. Looking for Richards. Finds him on the right elbow. Shane rips and drives. Floater from four feet off the glass. No good. Thomas the easy rebound. Up ahead, here comes Haas trying to get going himself. Splits the defense. What a move by Chris Haas. Boy, does he get up the floor very quickly? And they found him going. Down the left side, and he took it right to the basket. He's got seven points now, and it's a 11-point lead. Shane Richards on the left side. Wilson, left wing. Gets a screen from Allen. Tyler driving inside. In amongst the trees. Count it. Nope. Excuse me, the basket didn't go, but Wilson will be at the line. Coach, you made the point right.
before we went to break at the end of the first half. The first four minutes were going to be huge. Jaspers can't allow the lead to balloon into double digits. It's at 11 right now. And right now it's, it's at 11. And one of the negative things when we have Wilson and Storz in together, we don't have any scoring from the, those two positions. You like it defensively with the energy they give you. But offensively, you're not getting any production in the scoring column from those two players. Coach, you're on the money with that. One of the, my keys, being able to get into the lane, which Tyler Wilson was able to do there. I think you need paint touches when you have a lineup like this on the floor. Get it into the post or make sure you get into that lane so you can get to the free throw line without relying on outside jumpers. Wilson hits on both free throws, gets it back down to a nine-point game. Last year, Wilson and Storrs just combined to average 9.6 points per game. But again, as we've mentioned throughout, they're there for their leadership as well as their defensive pressure. Tom Capuano trying to pick up some of that pressure here as Storrs is checked out. Here's McKenzie on the near left side for Bucknell with Dom Hoffman, Ryan Frazier, Nana Fallon, and Chris Haas. 15 to shoot. It's Frazier around for Haas. Open three ball on the way. Front rim no good. Wilson trying to track down the rebound. Couldn't. Fallon has it. Works on Allen. Spin move. Out for McKenzie. Around for Frazier. Drives by Richards. Leaves it for Haas. And now Haas works with the left hand. Stops in the paint. Trying to get a little dream shake, but couldn't get it to go. And here is Frazier now on the left corner. Threw it off of Carlton Allen. It fell to Hoffman. Somehow he threw that ball off the back of Carlton Allen. And Hoffman was there waiting for it. Yeah, I don't know how that pass got through. And Hoffman was right there to... Pick up the loose change, kind of, for the two points. Back to an 11-point game at 52-41. Left side, Shane Richards, 16 and a half to play in the second. Williams, tried to get a crossover move, lost the handle. Ball is loose, and McKenzie has it. Unforced turnover there by Manhattan. McKenzie, no wood pass for Haas in the lane. Couldn't get the shot to fall, but it'll be at the line. as another foul on Carlton Allen, his second, team's third. Tell you, Manhattan, a little slow getting back in transition. Defense and Bucknell taking advantage of it. Last time, Hass was down for the layup, and this time they again penetrated, and he's back at the line for two shots. Well, Coach, you talked about the sign of a good team closing out a half in the beginning of a half. Bucknell closed out that first half well, coming back out strong. We talked about Chris Haas not doing much in that first half. Understanding that, he comes out like gangbusters. Correction, that was the second team foul on Manhattan here as Haas hits on the front end of the two free throws. After having just three points in the first, he's got five here in the second. Total of eight points as Nate Jones and DJ McClay check in. Meanwhile, Ak Ojo is back in there. Richards on the left side, top of the key for Williams. Jasper's trailing by 13. Rich takes it right to the rack, no good. Ojo there for the offensive board, and he is fouled. Oh, boy, I like that. The big man didn't stand and watch as Williams drove the lane. He came from the foul line in to come up with that offensive rebound. Two good things on that play. You like Rich Williams attacking the basket. Again, he didn't make the shot. Ojo going to the glass. Good things happen when you're in attack mode. Inbounds fell right to Capuano when he lays it in. I don't know if he deflected. Did he just do a Steve Nash and deflect it off the defender? Back the other way. Haas, a lot of contact. No good. Haas trying to get back into the play. McClay lost the ball. It's on the deck. He has it. And a jump ball is going to be called. And it is possession to Bucknell. Boy, what energy both teams putting out. You can love it when the ball gets down on the floor. I think Capiano threw it off the guy gone and turned yeah. his back on it. That's the old playground play. <laughs> We've all done that in the playgrounds throughout the years. And then he just walked in for a layup. Again, he plays with a lot of savvy young. Tip away. He needs some stops defensively. Well, it looks like the Bucknell team's getting into a comfort zone. They're starting to run their offense fairly well. And defensively, they're getting stops. Haas had it stripped away by Richards. Great steal by Shane, the senior. Now he leaves it for Wilson. Here come the Jaspers. Capuano's calling for the ball. Williams drives inside in a blocking foul. Boy, Rich looked like a fullback going through the line there as he kind of lowered his shoulder. The Bisons fans who made the three-hour trip from Lewisburg wanted a foul called on Rich. Instead, it's a fourth on Bucknell. Very lucky. It wasn't an offensive charge. That might be a home call there. Wilson. 
Looking for the inbound. Throws it to Ojo in the corner. Tried oh. to bounce pass it for Wilson, but Tyler wasn't there, and it's an easy steal for the Bison. Quickly back up ahead, Nate Jones. Leaves it for Hoffman, running the floor. Hoffman, turnaround, hook shot, back iron, no good. Ojo with a big rebound. He's got three boards here in his collegiate Look debut. Big guy run the floor. You got to like that. He ran it both ways, defensively and offensively. Richards in the corner. Gets a screen from Ojo. Inside the arc. Kicks it to Capuano. Head fake on a three. Tom drives inside. Tried to pass off for Ojo, but it was tipped away by McClay. And another steal here. That is the eighth turnover by Manhattan tonight. And a foul on Tyler Wilson. His third. It'll be the team's third with 15.08 to play here in the half. Can Ojo impressive again here in the second half? The minutes that he's on the floor. Would love for him to get the ball around the basket where he can get a dunk. And feel good about himself, Coach, because he's working so hard. He is. I mean, you, you, Messiel told me that he has a good motor, and he really does. You'd love to see a big guy run the floor, not only offensively, but defensively. Stores and Allen check back in to replace Capuano, excuse me, to replace Wilson and Ojo. Hoffman, turnaround jumper from 18 feet, hit it. Hoffman is one of those experienced senior guys. He doesn't look like a real player, but yet he'll get rebounds, he'll hit open shots, he'll beat you in a lot of different ways. Played at Gill St. Bernard's in New Jersey. He's got 10 points to match Zach Thomas. Both teams with two men in double figures, but on the big board, it's Bucknell 56, Manhattan 43 with 14.40 to play. Five fouls on the Bison here as Carlton Allen looks to trigger the inbound, finds Rich Williams. Rich, he'll take the 15-footer, missed it short, rebound, tipped around right to Rich Williams. He went up, tried to slam at home. Nate Jones got up there to meet him at the arc and fouled him. Well, that's a good hustle by Carlton Allen, keeping that ball alive, tips it over to Rich Williams. Again, Allen almost with a good block. Looks like he met Williams right at the top near the rim area. But Rich is going to the line to shoot two. And you pointed that out, Smooth. I was kind of watching that as well. Rich Williams and Kimball McKenzie having a little bit of a chat. Didn't look to be anything <laughs> too, you know, to keep an eye on. But it definitely wasn't a cordial chat as Williams hits on the first free throw. If I know my basketball IQ... McKenzie probably told Williams that was a clean block. Rich said, no, it wasn't. I'm going to dunk it on you next time. I'm just assuming that was a conversation, Coach. It wasn't where we're going to go after <laughs> no, the I doubt it. For I a cup of coffee. It. Williams at the line after hitting the first. Second one on the way, also good. Rich has nine points now. Manhattan trails by 11, 56-45. Brown in the backcourt, hounded by Capuano and Stores. Pass here to the near side for McKenzie. He's driving into the lane, leaves it for Thomas, and it somehow ricocheted over to Jones on the right side. Brown, 15 to shoot. Right side, Nate Jones again. Thomas at the free throw line. Ball fake, backs down on Williams. Stops, pops, blocked by Williams, but a foul. I think the foul is going to go on Capuano from behind, and it will. Thomas got right into the middle of that zone, and they found him. Again, with his size, his shooting touch, he was able to draw the foul. That's the fourth foul on Capuano, who's got 10 points in his second college game, career high for him. His first 10 points of his collegiate career as Thomas rolls in on the front end of those two free throws, and Tyler Wilson's going to have to check in to replace Capuano. Rebound to Rich Williams after the missed free throw. Jasper's trailing by 12. Six minutes gone by here in the second half. Williams, right side stores. Richards, top of the key. Handoff for Wilson. Tyler gets a screen from Williams to his right. Now looks to come back the other way. Crossover move, drives, leaves it for Allen. Carlton got the hand on the ball, missed it on the front rim. And a rebound pulled in by Brown. Quickly they run the floor. Here comes Nate Jones. Works in on Richards, now stops. Looking for a passing option, finds Thomas. 15 feet from the basket. Couple of dribbles, looks inside for Fallon. Fallon goes up, blocked by Williams, but a foul. Nice entry pass by Thomas to Fallon, who had good position on Allen down low. Yeah, we haven't said enough about Fallon. Again, we talked about him being 6'9", and I talked about his length. Him running the floor, he's been a real problem for the Jasmine. Again, he's kept balls alive. 
again, posting up in that lane area. He's been getting really deep. Fallon hits on the first. All rookie team member last year in the Patriot League. Yeah, and look, he's just a sophomore. Right. He's, this guy's going to get better and better. And his offensive game isn't polished just yet. Fallon hits on both. You're talking about him not being polished, but he didn't start until his junior year of high school. And what did he do in those two years? It was just the conference player of the year, wow. both his junior and senior year. As Richards pops from the right elbow on the way back rim, Whoa. and it fell. Shooter's touch there. A nice dead <laughs> ball. Came right in. 47-59, Manhattan trailing by 12. Richards with six, excuse me, 18 points. Thomas, season opening, drives inside, and he's fouled by Waterman. Thomas is living in that lane area where he comes in, makes a good decision. Either he's going to keep it or lay it off for foul, and that time he keeps it, earning himself another trip to the free throw line. Yeah, they do a nice job of putting him in the middle of that floor against Manhattan's press, and they send it to him, and he attacks the basket. Both teams with six fouls here in the half, so we are a foul each away from what is going to be a really long second half here with free throws upcoming. As the first one is missed by Thomas, he is now five of seven. Second one, rolls it in. 13-point lead. Bucknell has led by as many as 13. Wilson between the circles to Waterman. Three ball from the left corner, back iron too strong. Rebound pulled in by Stephen Brown. Out the other way, McKenzie, transition three, no good. Thomas had the rebound, but Storrs took it away. Up ahead for Richards. Shane driving inside, slides that off the window, too strong. Storrs the offensive board, and it's on the deck. Waterman picks it up, trying to fight for it, and he does reset the offense for Manhattan. Well, good hustle there. Opportunities uh, for Baskets, not able to convert. Manhattan shooting just three of ten here in this second half. Storrs on the right side. 15 to shoot. Wilson, top of the key, stores, open, three ball, on the way, count it. That's a big three for Manhattan. It gets him within 10 at 60 to 50, and a timeout taken here by Steve Massiello with 12.25 to play. Well, again, that's a great job by Storrs, following up with Richards after Richards missed the lead. His coaching staff this year as well. Manhattan trailing by 10 after that made three from Rashawn Storrs. Well, here's your answer. You're pressing. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Jasper's looking to put on some extra pressure. Haas gets the inbound, and now Thomas has it. Throw it up ahead for Brown. He breaks the press pretty easily. And from behind, Matt Maloney is going to pick up the foul. And it'll be a one-and-one -one opportunity here for Bucknell as A.K. Ojo is back into the contest. One thing I, I learned many years ago, if you're pressing and you're giving up layups or you're giving up fouls, maybe get out of your press. Right. <laughs> Food for thought. Stephen Brown at the line, the sophomore. One and one. Missed on the front end. Rebound tipped around. Fought for it. Falls to Shane Richards. That's the fifth board of the night for Richards. 12 12 to play here in the second half. Manhattan looking to get it back down to single digits. They can on this possession. Richards, 18 foot jump shot on the way. Too strong. No good. Rebound falled out of bounds by Zach Thomas. Jasper Bench wanted a foul. As Richards came off that curl on the elbow. Well, this is a case in point where Bucknell has made all the additional shots that Shane has taken much more difficult than the start of the first half. AK quickly out of the ball game again. He's got four fouls, or excuse me, he's got three fouls. Yeah, that was a good call. I saw that myself. Thomas grabbing Richards as he tried to come, and a good call by the official. Well, Pavia. You know, Coach, it's a little late than what we're used to seeing. We're used to seeing a lot of guys holding Richards coming through screens and getting that foul call in the first but few he minutes. He was him right away. I mean, <laughs> come on. Richards, the first free throw on the one and one is good. Jasper's back within nine. Shane with 19 points on the day. Had 23 again at St. Mary's on Monday night. Hits on both. And for the second straight game, he's got 20 points, and A.K. Ojo is back into the contest. Replacing Carlton Allen. Fallon 
gets the inbound. Couple of guys trip up, and Stephen Brown is the beneficiary as he gets the loose ball. Comes back the other way, missed it off the window, but a foul. Is it going to go against Williams? It will go against Richards. That'll be his second. I tell you, they're ready for the pressure, and they're attacking it. That time, a two-on-one, able to get the foul call and get back to the line. But I think more importantly, they're putting. Brown missed on the front end of a one and one. He was three of four coming into today this season. Missed on that one. Manhattan again, allowing Bucknell to get to the free throw line. This is the 13th free throw shot of the second half, and it's good. Nine of 13 are the Bison here in this second half at least. It's back to a nine point game, 61-52. Tyler Wilson, Shane Richards, Rashawn Stores, Rich Williams, Carlton Allen. Wilson, looking for Richards to get free. Instead gets a screen from Allen and now kicks it to Williams. Rich, spin move into the lane with the right hand. Florida too strong, no good. Rich and Carlton Allen fought for the rebound against each other. It fell to Stephen Brown. Ahead for Haas. Haas comes flying inside, high off the window, no good. And a foul on Bucknell. Offensive foul on Stephen Brown trying to fight for that offensive board. That's a good job by Shane Richards running the floor, getting himself in good position to get that rebound. Brown has to come over his back, call for the foul. Shane going to the line. Great opportunity for the Jaspers to cash in with the clock staying still. So Richards will head to the line. He's closing in on a career high. His career high is 24. First free throw on the one and one. No good. Rebound. Kicked off the foot of Tyler Wilson. And it's going to go the way of Bucknell. Wilson went up for that rebound, but it looked like Fallon was kind of holding him a little bit. No whistle, though. The referee's letting him play. Jasper's pressing here. As McKenzie... Ahead for Thomas, driving, bounce pass, stolen away, almost stolen away by Rich Williams. Carlton Allen baited Thomas into that pass, and Williams stepped right in front of Fallon to try and take that away. Bucknell continues to attack that pressure defense, getting the ball to the middle that time to Thomas, and made a good decision taking it to the basket. Out of bounds will be Bucknell along the baseline. A.K. Ojo replaces Carlton Allen. He will guard the inbound. Looking for a passing option. They throw it all the way into the backcourt. Haas leaves it for McKenzie. Jasper settle into their half-court zone defense. Here's McKenzie. Right side for Thomas. Working against Storrs and now Frazier. Around for McKenzie again. Picked up his dribble. Looking for a passing option. Scoots it away for Haas. And Richards easy able to pick that one off. Nine minutes gone by. Here's Storrs. Thought about the three. Now he's going to drive inside. Storrs gets a lot of contact off the window. No good. Rebound tipped around. Ojo falls on it. Now has to find a pass. And it's Rashawn Storrs calling a timeout. Jump ball. Possession with Manhattan. Remember the new rule. Coaches cannot call timeout from the sidelines during live ball. It's got to come from a player on the court. They call and foul. they're going to give the timeout to Manhattan. So instead of the jump ball, Shane Richards was right next to Paul Fea calling timeout. So it will be Manhattan possession, and they'll keep the arrow, which is huge when you come down to it. 152, 1045 remaining. And again, the biggest thing is they do keep that arrow in case of a tie ball situation here. Or a jump ball situation, I should say. 10.45 to go. Jasper's trail by nine. Capuano throws it into the backcourt for Tyler Wilson. And with 25 seconds on the shot clock, he brings it across. Wilson to his right through a Williams screen. Capuano down the right side of the lane. Kicks it. Rich open. Left corner. Three ball. Back rim. Rattled around. No good. Easy board for Zach Thomas. Boy, you got to make those open looks. That time, nobody near him. Not able to knock down the three ball. Whistle away from the basketball on A.K. Ojo. That'll be his fourth. And it'll be one and one for Nana Fallon. We're shooting just three of 12 in this ball game. Allen checking in for AK. As Nate Jones and Dom Hoffman check in for Bucknell. 
Fallon at the line. 8 of 17 coming into today. He's been 3 for 3, though, this evening. Hits on the front end of the 1-1. One and one. Back to a double-digit lead for the Bison here. 23 of 28 mm. from the free throw line. Hits on both. Manhattan just 10 of 12 at the line. It's never good when your opponent is making more free throws than you're attempting. Wilson, top of the key. Richards on the left side. Handoff for Rich Williams. He drives left side up off the window. A lot of contact, no good. May have been blocked a little bit too as well. Here's McKenzie, transition. Haas, three ball on the way. Front rim, no good. Long board out for, Rich, for Tyler Wilson, rather. Wilson, head full of steam, leaves it for Richards. Transition, three ball, rattled it in. Great job by Tyler Wilson, understanding and transition. Who's around him, able to lay that ball back for Richards for the big time three. Eight point game, 63-55. 9.45 to play here in the second half. Jasper's trail in their home opener from Dratty Gym. In Riverdale, the Bronx, New York. Christian Imel, Chris Williams, and the coach Brian Mahoney here with you on the Jasper Sports Network. Glad to be a part of your Saturday evening. Haas in the free throw lane. Leaves it outside for McKenzie. Whistle. And three seconds on Bucknell. Jasper basketball. There's a big turnover. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. Chance to potentially get it down to a five-point game here on this possession for Manhattan. Williams will walk it across midcourt. And now Wilson sets the offense from straight away. Richards, left wing. Hand off for Williams. He'll take a three ball. Back iron, no good. Yeah. Nate Jones, an easy board. He missed that just like he missed the first one, a little long. Jasper's one and done. Hoffman. Foul line extended on the left side and now back up top. Right side, Haas. Nine minutes to go here in the second. Hoffman in front of his own bench, right wing, and now near left side, here's McKenzie. Right-handed dribble around the screen, down the lane at the elbow, blocked by Tyler Wilson, and the rebound will fall. It'll be a foul on Carlton Allen, and that'll be his third. Double bonus action now for Bucknell with 8.49 to go. DJ McClay. At the free throw line for two. Misses on the first. A little interesting to see here with 8.50 to go as Zane Waterman will replace Rich Williams. Not a single Bison player on the line looking to box out here a potential offensive rebound. McClay's second free throw is good. Back to a nine-point game at 64-55. Jaspers have made just one of their last seven field goal attempts. Waterman. Left side, Wilson. Richards fighting through bodies, trying to get free. On the right side. Shane goes around an Allen screen at the top of the key, and now here is Wilson. Wilson driving, a lot of contact, and a foul going to be called. Tyler will head to the line for a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. It's going to go against McKenzie, and that is going to be his second, team's ninth. Well, again, one of the keys I talked about at halftime, paint touches. Most of the time, the average fan, when they think of paint touches, they think about bigs just posting up. I was referring to guys like Tyler Wilson being aggressive, getting into that lane. Again, he gets pushed there. He goes to the free throw line, but he got to the lane, which is considered a paint touch. Let's see if he can convert at the line. He struggled throughout his career at the free throw line. Paul Fay and Matt Palum, Kevin Ferguson, our officiating crew. Wilson on the front end of the 1-1, missed it. Rebound pulled in by Hoffman. Tyler was two for his previous two. Last year, he was just 51 of 87 at the stripe. Left side, Nate Jones. Bucknell looking to take some time off the clock here with 8-12 to play. Inside, they look for McClay again. He's double teamed by Allen and Richards. Long pass from McKenzie, extra pass. Hoffman, three ball on the way. Front rim, no good. Rebound is going to fall out of bounds. Hoffman saved, rather McClay saved it. And it's all the way back out top to McKenzie, who says slow down. Got a fresh shot, shot clock of 30. This 
Skip pass up top, McKenzie. Near left side, here's Jones controlling with 10 to shoot. McKenzie, pass was poked away, and it'll come right here. I had it, and it got stolen. Good job. I had it. There. I was, was ready. ready. <laughs> you were ready, but you also look like you're going to bail out. <laughs> Ball with just eight seconds on the shot clock, 7.37 to play. Here in regulation, Chris Schneimel, Chris Williams, and the coach Brian Mahoney here with you. 64-55, Bucknell leading at Dratty Gym. Hoffman skips it for Haas with three. He'll step beyond the arc, fire up a three, front rim no good. Rebound is pulled in by Nate Jones, and McKenzie again resets for the Bison. Another offensive rebound. You're not a solid box out there. You had two Jaspers right in the same area. Neither one of them put a body on Johnson. Hoffman floats it inside for Fallon. Fallon blocked away by Allen, but a foul underneath. If it's on Carlton, that is his fourth. It'll be on Richards, that's his third. Well, basically, Fallon single handedly has put both Jasper Biggs in foul trouble, getting good high low sets, able to keep that off the defender on his hip to get that high low look. Free throw on the way, no good. Manhattan. Scoreless in the last two minutes and 48 seconds. Have not scored since the 10 minute mark. Meanwhile, Bucknell goes 0 for 2 at the line there, Fallon. They have missed their last six. Seven minutes remaining here in regulation. Jasper's trailing by nine, 64-55. Richards works around Jones, driving inside. A lot of contact off the window and in. Fallon grabs his chin a little bit as he and Shane connected underneath. And now here comes Nate Jones across midcourt. Ball was loose. Capuano almost had it. They're going to call a foul on Tom Capuano. Steve Massiello, Chris Williams, and about 2,000 <laughs> others couldn't really believe it. Well, most of Capuano's fouls have been the same exact way where he's reaching in, and that's his fifth. Fifth foul on Capuano, and that was where people were a little bit more upset. You love the hustle, but the fouling is another thing. What you do, you ended up putting now Jones on the line for two shots. Steve Massiello smiling, laughing with his freshman guard, saying, that's not you, don't worry about it. He had a brilliant game, 10 points, 4 of 5 shooting. And what was his, really, I mean, every freshman eventually has a coming out party where they have a good game. And in just his second collegiate game, Tom Capuano going 4 of 5 here at home when you know the jitters are even higher for a freshman playing his first home game. Great confidence builder. Matt Maloney will replace him as Jones misses on the free throw. Well, in the immortal words of Rashid Wallace. <laughs> Ball don't lie. Ball don't lie. Jones will have one more opportunity. Made it. Jaspers down by 8, 65, 57. As Jones checks out, five on the floor for Manhattan. Tyler Wilson, Zane Waterman, Matt Maloney, and Carlton Allen. For Bucknell, it's Stephen Brown, Ryan Frazier, Chris Haas, Zach Thomas, and Nana Fallon. Richards, beyond the arc, on the right side, guarded by Frazier, driving, now reversing. Here's Allen, top of the key. Wilson with 12 to shoot. Tyler driving down the length of the floor and lays it in. Good strong move that time. Big bucket there. Brown blows right past Maloney down the length of the floor. Blocking oh. foul on Allen. Oh, Allen was there the whole time. But you know with that new arc, maybe he was inside the arc. I'm not sure. He was pretty deep. We'd love to see a replay of that. But you have both guards on either team going strong to the basket. Tyler Wilson with the strong move. Brown coming right back at you. Getting a little rowdy here in November at Dratty Gym as Brown's first free throw is good. He's got a chance to put his team back up by eight. Waterman checks out. Williams back in for the Jaspers. Foul on Allen was his fourth. Second one also good. 67-59, the Bison lead with 6.15 to play here in regulation. Williams top of the key. Left side, Wilson. 
Richards lost the handle but is able to get it back with 15 seconds to shoot. Six minutes left in the half. Wilson walks it in front of his own bench on the left side. Now driving, kicking. Maloney, right side, three ball on the way. Back iron, no good. Allen fight for the board. Lost it out of bounds. They say last touch by Manhattan. It'll be Bucknell possession. Boy, that's twice I remember in this game. He's got his hands on it. He just has to squeeze it. CA takes a seat here with Ojo back into the game. AK also has four fouls. And a timeout taken by Zach Thomas as the Jaspers press forces Bucknell to take that timeout. They will have Thomas along with Frazier, Brown, Haas, and Fallon. The inbound comes to Frazier. He'll blow by Maloney and try to hustle ahead. Now he stops, picks up his dribble, and here in the near left side, it's Stephen Brown. With the left hand, working against Maloney, drives around him to the right side. Frazier open, extra pass, Thomas, three ball on the way, good. 11-point game, 70-59, to 59, Bucknell on top. Thomas now with 15 points on this game. He had 10 at halftime. As Richards hands off for Rich Williams. Spin move at the left elbow. Awkward shot back rim. Rattles around. No good. Haas with the rebound. Despite being held to just nine points, Haas does have five rebounds for the Bison. Brown, top of the key. Looking to extend their lead just a little bit more. Five minutes to play here in regulation from Dratty Jim. Brown fires a pass down to the baseline, and now they fire it back up top for Brown. He drives inside, dumps it off for Fallon. Fallon goes up, dunks it home. Two-hand slam for Nana Fallon. That and big man was able to catch it and finish. Two hands at the basket. 13-point lead. Maloney for Richards. Top of the key. Gets a screen from Ojo. Richards, three ball on the way. Back iron, no. Long rebound and a foul going to go against A.K. Ojo, and he has fouled out. Oh, excuse me. It'll go on Fallon, rather. I thought they pointed at Ojo instead. They pointed at Fallon, and AK will be at the line for a pair of free throws, looking to get his first points of his collegiate career. Free throw on the way. Off to the side of the rim, no good. Zane Waterman checks in to replace Matt Maloney, so the Jets are going to go with a little bit of a bigger lineup while they have the bodies. Wilson, Williams, Richards, Ojo, and Waterman. AK at the line, missed on the second free throw. The rebound is fought for and pulled in by Zach Thomas. Four and a half to play. Need some stops right now. Brown near left side, working against Wilson. 15 to shoot. Haas calling for the ball on the right side, doesn't get it. Thomas instead drives right side on Richards. Ball through the hands of Fallon and out of bounds to Manhattan. Thomas has an uncanny ability to get in that lane area and make some things happen. Again, I might be stretching. Kind of reminds me of Emmy Andujar. Mm. Once you get into the lane, makes a decent decision, or he can score it on his own. Wilson to the left side for Richards. Gets a screen from A.K. Ojo. Richards stops at the free throw line. Looking for a pass. Finds Wilson on the right side. Under four to play. Wilson. Dribbling with the basketball at the top of the key. Crossover move. Wilson, 18-footer on the way. Back iron. No good. Rebound tipped around. It'll be Bucknell basketball off the rebound from Thomas yet again. Back up ahead. Here comes Haas. Driving inside off the window. Count it and one. Richards was in underneath that arc, so it is the right call on the block for Shane. He's sneaky fast getting down the floor. And they look for him as he runs uh, the left lane, that time attacking the basket. But you have to run the offense much better. Coach and I alluded to, got really comfortable against the Jazz for pressure, able to make some things happen. But defensively, they were able to get stops. Haas converts on the and one. Makes it a 16-point game at 75-59. Tyler Wilson, Rich Williams, Shane Richards, Zane Waterman, Carlton Allen on the floor for the Jaspers. Waterman traveled with it on the right wing. Too many steps. You know, between Zane, one of six and two points, and Rich Williams, three of 16, and they're two of the key guys that Manhattan needs to score points and to rebounds, and they haven't produced. 
The score of 22 combined. Stephen Brown lobbed it up for Fallon. I think he wanted him to try and go for the alley-oop dunk, but it was a poor pass. It turns into a turnover here as Wilson for Waterman. Three ball on the way. Right on cue, Coach. He buries home a three. Well, that's what he's capable of doing. We know that. Thomas triggers the inbound. It's out of bounds off of Rich Williams. Jasper's trying to fight back here down 13. Plenty of time left. 3.03. Left here in the second. Thomas inbounds it for Haas, and it's out of bounds again. This time it's Waterman tipping the pass away. It'll still be Thomas to trigger the inbound. He finally gets it to Frazier, and a foul on which Williams will put Bucknell at the free throw line with 3.02 remaining. And there's one thing we know about this Jasper team. They've created a culture where they're always going to give yep. a great effort. They're not going to lay down. We knew that from the Adelphi basketball game. Even though it was a loss, they're going to work hard and fight into the end. Frazier at the line. Hits on the first free throw. Talk about a gentleman who excels as a student athlete in every sense of the word. Not only as he excelled on the basketball court as he misses on the second free throw. This is his second year as captain of the Bucknell squad, but he has been awarded the Arthur Ashe Sports Scholar Award twice wow. during his time at Bucknell. Great student as well as Waterman. Almost another three. Allen knocked the rebound around. It's thrown away right almost to you, Coach. It was I, coming I at was you. I was ready to bail out myself. <laughs> So the Jaspers with possession here. 76-62 they trail with 2.46 to play. Williams. And now Waterman between the circles. Wilson, top of the key. Left side, Richards. Shane trying to fight around Frazier. Waterman backing down. Spin move off the left, blocking in. Nice move by Zane Waterman. Sounds like Coach woke up Zane Waterman getting looking to be more aggressive offensively with the jumper that time the post up. Richards with the steal and the ball knocked around off of him and it'll be possession to Bucknell. Great defense by Shane Richards. Jumping that passing lane in the press, but the ball got knocked around a little bit. Well, that's what they have to get out of Waterman. Yeah. He's capable, he can shoot it from the outside. That time you saw him post up, making a good strong move inside, but too little, too late. Right. A.K. Ojo back in, replacing Carlton Allen again. 2.23 remaining. Haas. Right side for Brown. Pass up ahead for Haas as they break the press. And now they bring it back for Brown between the circles. 2.12 to play here in regulation. Inside for Fallon. Turnaround hook shot. No good. Fight for his own rebound. He got it. Had it knocked loose. It's on the deck. Out of bounds to Manhattan. He fell to the ground trying to keep possession, and as he did, he knocked the ball just over that end line. And now Ojo will be replaced by Waterman, or excuse me, by Allen offensively. A little offense for defense substitutions whenever Massiello can get the opportunity. Jaspers trail by 12, 76-64, two minutes remaining here in the second half, and a foul as Richards was knocked to the ground. It's going to go against Zach Thomas. That'll be his third, and it'll be Richards headed to the line for a pair of free throws. Yeah, Shane trying to make a nice back screen. Have Waterman run, rub off him. Held his ground and got the call. Shane with a career high 25 points here tonight. Make it 26 as he's adding to that total. AK Ojo back in, replacing Carlton Allen. Shane's second free throw is good. Back to a 10-point game under two minutes. Just a tick under two minutes. Comes to Brown on the inbounds. And the pressure begins. Brown alone in the backcourt. Leaves it ahead for Thomas. And now the Jaspers settle into their half-court defense. Brown. Bounce pass. Thomas at the elbow. Driving. Kicking. Haas. Three ball on the way. Was contested. Short. Wilson has the rebound. And now he's going to run it up the floor. Tyler driving all the way inside. Kicked it for Richards. Three ball on the way. Back rim no good. Easy board for Fallon. 
Brown up ahead. Haas all alone to the rim. What a beautiful pass by Stephen Brown. Boy, he runs that floor very well. No backcourt protection that time. And Bucknell doesn't hesitate to take it the length of the floor. Waterman not hesitating as he tries to drive the lane and missed it too strong off the back window. One and done goes Manhattan with a minute 10 remaining, trailing by 12, 78-66. That transition opportunity was key. Great pass by Brown, but again, Haas running the floor well, held in the first half, but in the second half, made a conscious effort to score the basketball. Brown on the right side with six to shoot. Three ball on the way from Thomas. Back iron no good. Rich Williams Carroll collects the carom. Jasper is trying to cut down into this lead with 40 seconds to go. Richards driving, and a foul is going to be called. Shane will head to the free throw line for two more with 40.8 seconds to go. We've seen crazier things happen. Jasper's trailing by 12, 78-66 here. 41 seconds, but a chance to put points on the board with the clock stopped. Richards at the free throw line is no good. Bucknell looking to move to three and one for the first time since the 2012-13 season when they went four and zero. Oh. Looking to go two and zero oh on the road as well. Their only loss coming at home to Wake Forest, an eight point loss to the Demon Deacons. Richards goes one of two at the line. Inbounds comes to Haas. Jasper's trying to pressure here with 10 second difference between shot and game clock. We'll see if they foul, and when they do, who it will be. But they're not fouling yet with 20 seconds on the shot clock. Haas, right side, Brown. The Bucknell fans who made the trip start to get a little extra loud. And now with 10 seconds, they move. Brown, driving on the right side, steps back from the elbow. The jumper, good. And that was just the dagger there. 80 to 67, they lead. Wilson going to bring it up with 10 seconds to go. Jasper's going to try to make it a 10-point game. It'll be Richards. He'll fire up the deep three. Miss it. Williams, the rebound with four seconds. Missed that one. Rebound put in by Haas. And Bucknell comes into Manhattan and leaves with an 80-67 victory. Well, Bucknell played very well in this game. We knew coming in. This is an